Hello everyone. Till now we had seen the presence of charged particles and then we had seen the phenomena of flow of charges. Then later on we had learned that this flow of charges constituted the electric current. But till now we don't understand that what actually makes these charges flow. Or we don't know that how does electric current flow. Now to understand this question, let us first understand a basic analogy of flow of water or the water current. Now to understand this, let us take a horizontal tube. So if I take this horizontal tube here and fill this horizontal tube with water. Now if I say that no external force is there, so B end is closed, so will the water at end A flow when I open the tap? No, obviously no. Because if we look at the water level at point A and point B, then there is no water level difference at point A and point B. So water will not flow. Now to make this water flow, what can I do? Now if I raise the end B, so there is a water level difference at point B and point A, so the water will start flowing. Also, if I attach a water tank at point B and fill this water tank with water, then you can see that there is a water level difference at point A and point B. So now if I open the tap, water will start flowing. But you will notice that water will stop flowing when the water level at B and at A comes at the same level. So we can say that water flows when there is water level difference or we can say pressure difference between the level of water. Now what if we want continuous flow of water from point B to point A. Now to ensure this we have to somehow maintain this water level difference between B and A. So if I attach a motor at point A which collects the water from the tap and pump it back to the water tank, then this water level difference or pressure difference between B and A will be maintained and hence we can say that there will be a continuous flow of water from B to A. So we can say that if we need continuous flow of water then we have to attach some external agency. Now, let us imagine the same scenario but instead of this tube, horizontal tube, we take the conductor and in the conductor we can see that there are electrons which are free to move. But will the electrons move? No. It's the same case as was there with the water. The charges will not flow till there is no pressure difference as was there in the water. So to maintain that or to make that, we will attach a positively charged plate at the end B of the conductor. So as we attach this plate, the electrons will start moving towards this positively charged plate. But their flow will stop as was stopped in case of water when there will be a deficiency created at point A of the conductor. So after some time, the flow of electrons will also stop. Now to ensure this continuous flow of electrons, we have to again attach some external agency here. In case of water, we had attached the motor. So could we attach the same motor here? Obviously no, we can't attach it. Because motor pumps the water, it doesn't pump the electrons, right? So to pump the electrons, we will attach a chemical cell. Now this chemical cell ensures a constant pressure difference. Here it is termed as potential difference. And this potential difference ensures that there is a continuous flow of electrons from point A to point B. So we can say that this potential difference is maintaining the continuous flow of electrons from point A to point B and hence the current is flowing continuously. So this was one way to understand electric potential and how it enables the electric current to flow. Now we have one more way to understand the electric potential. 
To understand that way, let us imagine a metallic plate and we want to charge this metallic plate by accumulating positively charged particles. So we'll just bring positively charged particles and drop on this plate. So when the plate was neutral, then it's very easy and very less amount of work is required to drop those charged particles on this plate. But as the charge accumulates on this metallic plate, more and more repulsion will be faced by the incoming charged particles. And more work will be required to drop the charged particles on this plate. So the total amount of work done to accumulate a certain amount of charge on this plate is termed as electric potential. We define electric potential as the amount of work done per unit charge that is accumulated on this plate. Or we can say that electric potential V is equals to work done W upon charge accumulated Q. So we can say that V is equals to W by Q. Now if we have to calculate electric potential for two points, let's say A and B. So if the work done to bring Q charge from B to A is WAB, then the electric potential V will be equals to WAB by Q. So unit of electric potential is volt. Now let us understand this whole concept by an example. Now in this example, we have to find out the work done which is required to bring a 2 coulomb charge from point B to point A if the potential difference between these two points is 12 volts. Now we know very well that electric potential is equal to work done upon charge. So in this case we have to find the work done and we are given the potential difference and the charge which is moved through this potential difference. So we can easily find out the work done as potential difference into charge. The potential difference given here is 12 volts and charge is 2 coulombs. So if we multiply these two, we'll get 24 joules. So 24 joules amount of work done will be used to bring the charge from point B to point 